Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. So today we're going to talk about options. We're just going to talk about the basics of options, really not even talking about what options are, but why you would want to use options. And essentially it's leverage, right? So options are a form of leverage. And if used right, you can add a lot of complexity to your trade. Uh, you can do a lot of cool, interesting things. For instance, if uh, stock price goes flat, you still profit from that. If the stock price wants to go one way or the other and you're not sure, but you know it's not just going to stay there, you could profit from that. But what we're going to talk about today is your basic call option. It's essentially the option that people take when they want to YOLO a trade or uh, they don't want to add any other complexity except for the fact that I think it's going to go up and think it's going to go up really fast and it's going to go up fast now. And so we're going to just go ahead and talk about that first very simple thing called the call option. Um, we're not even going to talk about what it is really. Uh, we just want to talk about why. And the reason why is because, you know, obviously I've uh, thought long and hard about this and I've thought about how there's so many other good videos out there on YouTube that are going to do way better job than me of explaining this. But, uh, you know, for what it's worth, a lot of folks have asked me, you know, Kenny, can you give us your take on options? So I think my take on options is going to start with the why. And that's what I'm going to attempt to present to you today and uh, kind of work through it. And, uh, you know, as I looked through options, trading courses and kind of videos, I did get a lot of little gaps filled by different people. And so hopefully, even if you're a veteran here, uh, some of these little gaps or nuances that are been, have been missing in your kind of options journey uh, will be filled here. That said, if you're new to this channel, we do everything all in one take. So if I kind of pause or whatever like that, that's because I'm literally just thinking about what I'm going to say next. Uh, none of this is kind of rehearsed or anything like that. But why would you want to use options? Okay, so I have a picture of a rocket ship here to the right. And essentially the reason why I put this rocket ship here is because options are a form of leverage. They're a form of what I would call fuel, right? So if you want to uh, add fuel to this rocket, you want to make sure the rocket's straight. You want to make sure the rocket's working. In the same way a VC fund would add money to an existing kind of company, a startup, uh, you know, if you add money to the wrong startup, it's just going to go broke faster, right? But if you add it to the right startup at the right time, at the right growth uh, phase, then you can absolutely have outsized returns in the same way as the rocket. If you add the right kind of fuel uh, to the fire, it's going to burn a lot brighter. Uh, but if you add fuel to a rocket that doesn't work, it's just going to crash and burn. So what is the reward? Uh, significant ROI. Significant meaning what you're doing is you're essentially, uh, you know, buying the right to control 100 shares of an underlying stock, right? And again, I said I wouldn't break that down, but all you need to know is you own the right to have 100 shares at whatever strike price that you want. And again, I'm not going to go over that in this one because we're going to do a, a what are options and break it all down. But today we're just talking about the simple call option, the thing that everybody basically uses to YOLO. Okay, so what are the risks involved? There's a thing called decay, and that's based on what they call theta. I'm not going to explain that today. We're going to go over that later. But just know that the option decays. So basically, my point is, if you bought Amazon, for instance, right, uh, and, uh, you know, you had that, uh, that point where it had like a 90% drawdown here. If you would have bought your options contract here, you wouldn't have lost 90%. You would have lost 100%. Uh, there's even times where, you know, the this underlying stock will only drop 10%, but you'll lose 100% of your option, right? Uh, because it's under the strike price or this price that you agreed to buy it from uh, uh, the seller for. Okay, what's my point? Uh, even with this 90% drawdown, if you had a raw equity position unleveraged, or even if you had leveraged a margin, uh, you know, over time it went way back up and it was absolutely profitable. So if you are a market investor uh, and you're not really thinking about uh, options in that way, then this could work against you. And the shorter the time frame that you give yourself, the more accurate you have to be. The longer the time frame, the more loosey goosey you can be and the more it is like a raw equity. In fact, there's a thing called LEAPS, um, and it's like an acronym for a long-term equity anticipatory position or something like that. Uh, the idea is I should have looked this up, but it doesn't matter. The point is LEAPS, uh, when it comes to how closely they 
trade against the underlying stock is is based on a thing called delta. I'm not going to expo- explain delta to you today, but if if the delta is one, it basically trades one for one, right? So that's what you're looking for there. But leaps are essentially, you know, 0.7 to one in terms of how close they are to the underlying stock, uh, but they do have a form of leverage, right? And these leaps go out for, I don't know, I think anybody would consider six months a leap, right? Uh, to, you know, three years is probably the farthest out that you could buy something. I don't think I've seen anything out farther than that. Okay, so what are some other risks to it? So there's an idea that there's a liquidity risk. That's because the bid to ask, uh, unlike a normal order book, doesn't have the typically the volume or open interest that a normal typical order book would because these contracts are essentially on the side, right? They're not trading inside the, uh, the spot price. So there's always a liquidity issue. So you want to make sure that the stocks that you're trading are very liquid. Uh, and so it's hard to leverage options on, on uh, illiquid stocks. Uh, there's, there's uh, for instance, we were talking about uh, Real Network uh that stock in itself we bought a raw equity position uh because there just wasn't any options uh any attractive options positions for it and then uh the premium so if you're a buyer and this is what we're talking about the call option if you're a buyer then you pay a premium and that premium obviously decays which is what we were talking about uh previously so if it doesn't hit that price by the expiration date, then it becomes completely worthless. So you always want to sell before that uh, while there's some premium or what they would call intrinsic value left, okay? And so we'll talk about all that, so don't worry about it, but I'm just trying to keep it very simple. Why should you use options? Basically leverage jet fuel, that's what you need to know. All right, so this is uh, just gonna be a visualization of what I just said, Uh, but basically this is OIH. Van Eck Vector Oil Services ETF trading at $236, right? Uh, Why am I showing this to you is because we have a trade on, but essentially I just want to kind of show you what it would look like if you bought, uh, uh, you know, the underlying stock or the option instead. So uh, here's the price itself, $236.45 marked as such. So if you bought four shares and it went to $240, so I'm suggesting here 236, it goes to 240. Uh, four shares, you want to, well, backtrack. Don't worry about that. Four shares would cost you $945. I'm just showing you this as an example, uh, making it an even $1,000. You can't buy, well, you can buy fractional shares on some platforms, but let's just use 945, round up to 1,000. Okay. so. If the stock, uh, the ETF that you bought right there, goes to $240, right, you would have made $40 if that was $1,000, not $945. I'm just rounding up. I'm just trying to show you what that looks like. And so this is what, if you've never thought about it, a raw equity position looks like this. This is the P&L curve, right? It literally can go infinite. There's infinite up here. Finite down here because you can only lose the the amount of the stock, right? So you can only lose 100%. So you can go negative 100%. But infinite over here. So this is what it actually looks like. If we zoomed out, you would see that it ends here at zero, right? But it keeps going forever. Um, But the idea here is, again, if we hit 240, you would have made 40 bucks. This is raw equity. Now, this is what we would call a long call. This is the call options that we always talk about buying, right? Um, this is a, you know, a website called Option Strat, and I definitely recommend that you take a look at it. Uh, but if we buy the 237 calls here, uh, you would cost it would have cost $1,130, a little bit more. Um, but uh, this is what the chart looks like. So you can only lose $1,000, like we said previously. And if it expires uh, a week from now, this is this timeline is going to be really weird because I made this slideshow like two weeks ago. But whatever, uh, you get the point. To pretend that this is in the future, June twenty fifth is in the future, especially if you're watching this forward. Uh, but the idea is, you know, if we land on two forty, um, we we completely we don't completely lose money, but we lose almost uh, half of our premium here. So you would probably lose like. Um, at this point, 500 bucks or something like that, you're probably going to be minus 500. 
uh, if you bought the 237. But, you know, let's take a look at how much you would have made. Um, okay, so this is not completely right because I don't have 240 set up here. Uh, okay, 250 is what I meant. I'm sorry. Apologies, 250 is what I meant. Um, this should be 250 as well, which I think start goes to like 80 bucks and not 40 because uh, 10 something like that you get the point um <laughs> and again everything here is in one take uh so apologies for the the bad math uh but uh yeah so here we go uh it still works out still checks out you get the point even if i'm generous over there with a hundred dollars you make fourteen hundred dollars here if it hits 250 by june 25th right at expiry and obviously there's a bunch of more uh top end stuff that you can get to and you know if you look at it you know 250 is only like a three or four percent move right it's completely reasonable for a stock to do or an online asset so i mean uh there's nothing um there's nothing kind of even remotely because uh, <laughs> if you can see here, you know, if even if you say 80 or split the difference, 100, I'm not going to do the math right now. Well, it'd be really easy, 1,000 bucks. So if I'm saying 40, yeah, another 10 bucks is going to be 50. It's not going to be 40. It's going to be 50. So 50 bucks. So 50 bucks uh, vice versus, I'm sorry, 1,400. It's not even a... It's not even a competition, really. But there's obviously risk involved. All right. Uh, so what does that look like if I put this to the side? If I turn that P&L curve over to the side, this thing right here, this thing here, if I turn it over to the side, what does that look like? Well, here's what it looks like, right? Um, basically, essentially, the max loss here gets to right here, right? So even though you bought it at that strike price, which was 237 here and 50 cents, uh, you can see that if it stays at 237.50 at the end of, at the end of the expiration date, it's worth exactly zero dollars, and that's because this is the premium you pay. That's not how much the stock price is worth. That's what they call intrinsic value. Okay, and then there's this gap where you can kind of lose money and you can kind of not lose money, but you can see uh, at exp at expiry if you don't clear this black line right here, which is about uh, 240. 242, um, I'm looking over here, sorry, uh, which is, and I know this is not perfectly aligned over here, but it's about 242. If I don't cross 242, then you essentially lose money. So your break even, and in fact, it tells you what it is, it's 243 right here. Here's a break even cost, 243, so it is 243. Uh, so if you don't cross 243, you will uh, not break even. Cross 243, you make money, get to 250, and you get $1,400. So you can see where the leverage comes in and how kind of optimal it is when you know exactly which way a stock is going to go. But you're like, Kenny, that's the hardest thing to ever know. How would you know? Well, there's things called bull runs, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, after the pandemic, had you got in any of that, any time there, you could continually roll options and, and make uh, basically essentially an infinite money loop until the markets got choppy, right? So every time a bull market starts to proceed, and I know it's hard to know when you're in a bull market, but you'll know. It's one of those ones that you'll know. And if you are in a bull market, then you definitely should take uh, advantage of options. Okay. So let's just kind of go over it. Why use options? Okay. So the re it rewards what I would call high accuracy. You got to know, uh, you know, when it's going to happen, timing. Uh, and the idea is though, if you buy at key level, like, you know, if a stock, let's say, you know, goes up and then it bounces around a key level and bull flags like this for a long time, it's obvious that this is clear support, uh, especially if there's like an underlying bid here on the order book. Uh, you could probably, you know, sell an option, and that's not what we're talking about here. But if you buy a call option and you think it's going to break out, uh, for instance, and it, if it hits a break over here and then you see it do this, then maybe buy a call option and it might uh, go up to the next leg, right? So you're trying to predict. So timing is very important, but it does reward timing and accuracy, right? Again, it rewards good palm reading skills. Um, and obviously, you know, this is one of those controversial things. You know, can you do palm reading? Uh, and that's why Redcliffe Research is all about anomaly detection. It's looking for signal, right? Uh, it's looking for these breakout patterns. It's looking for these uh, atypical sentiment uh 
uh, sentiment uh, exposure into the markets or whatever like that. So we can arbitrage that that information that's not exactly um, been uh, discounted into the uh, stock price or whatever. Uh, and then uh, it would we it would reward a risk defined ma macro strategy. Essentially, what I'm saying is, if you have what they would call in poker good bankroll management, uh, this is going to help you. Um, but it punishes poor trading execution. So if you're undisciplined, this is not going to help. Uh, you have to have a lot of discipline, uh, and it's gonna it's gonna punish uh, bad entries and bad stops. So if you're one of those guys that's like, oh, maybe it'll turn around, I'm not gonna stop out. Options are not for you because you do have to be Johnny on the spot on stops. You have to be Johnny on the spot in executing and getting good fills. Uh, in fact, you know, to get a fill, many times, you know, you have to put in your limit order. And again, because of the volume of liquidity, you might have to put like $10 and 30 cents and then you might have to like cancel and then do $10 and 29 cents and then cancel $10 and 28 cents and cancel. And you're like, uh, Kenny, why don't I just buy into the bid, right? Or um, buy into the ask. Uh, yeah, but then you'll be buying at 1040. And again, that's the lack of discipline, right? Sometimes you can do it. But I mean, if you don't have the discipline to go in there and go 1030, 1029, 1028. All right. Actually, I'm sorry, the reverse. Uh, if I'm buying, sorry, 1030, 1031. <laughs> you get my point, right? 1032, uh, uh, exactly until you get the fill. Uh, if you don't have that kind of discipline, then options are probably not for you. And again, it punishes trades in a vacuum because essentially what you're doing when you um, um, when you're using options is you're you're making a P&L curve that is very volatile. So you know it could look something like this, and but uh, you know like again like as 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 we said as an example for poker, but you know if this is zero dollars and this is a mill, you know. Does this suck? Does this all this suck in the middle? Yes, it does suck in the middle. Does this absolutely suck? Yes, but you get to a mill at the end of the day, right? And that's kind of the point to that. Um, so what is my other point? You know, well, basically why people diversify, why people use raw equity is because, you know, they want to see a P&L curve that does this, right? Like that's uh, for the most part just going to go up. And that's fine. If this is you, if you think this is good, then you definitely should not use options, right? If you think this is fine, if you think something like this is fine, then use options. <laughs> so that's essentially the why uh, for me at least and in terms of like why you should be using options. So, so okay, uh, that was just the first why you should use options and we're gonna go into a bunch of other stuff Unfortunately, for some reason, my slide is cut off uh, because of cloud. Cloud saving is not saving the right version of this, but uh, we're going to be going over a bunch of other things. We're going to be going over the Greeks. We're going to be going over all kinds of different types of option strategies, including selling options, uh, the synthetic long, which I think I'm a big fan of, uh, the bull put spread and some iron butterfly, iron condor stuff. But basically all that means is it's trying to set up different ways to take trades. Uh, because again, sometimes you might see something, but instead of force fitting a thing, like I'm going to buy the stock, wouldn't it be nice to be able to do something else with the stock? And you're like, okay, well, you know, it's not all about shorting the stock or putting a put on the stock, but why are puts better? Well, there's not infinite loss. Why are puts better? Well, Sometimes you just don't want to pay the borrow fees to get the puts, and then there's a ton of you know uh, cost to holding those shares, uh, depending on the broker, et cetera, especially if they're hard to borrow. So puts, typically not hard to borrow because they're supposed to be there. They're supposed to be there to hedge against um, uh, uh, your stock, uh, your underlying stock, right? So that's just a couple things. And uh, hopefully, hopefully this helped you. Uh, not my best work, but uh, I did want to put this out. And uh, so we'll work on this and uh, we'll get uh, the other options videos uh, to you pretty soon. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you like this kind of thing, we do have a free macro newsletter link in the description or you can go to RayCliffResearch.com. Um, if you want to join the Slack chat, I'm actually going to open up some free slots into the Slack chat. Uh, probably going to put the link in the description today. I'll be good just for today uh, if you checked out this video. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, we will see you tomorrow.